Hello, Patreon community. Mesji Sukuri coming to you from Tokyo, Japan. Last Friday, I was really hoping to put one more podcast out, but I had to take a little bit of time to do the video that I just released. If you check Instagram or if you check our homepage here, you can see that I added a new video. The title is Ij Sha. It's original music that I recorded, played, and produced, and mixed, mastered everything. Then I made a video. Now the video is something I wanted to talk about today because it was such a good learning experience, right? First of all, I want to say thank you to all of you guys here on Patreon for supporting always because, um, like I said, you guys directly helped to pay for the lights, the time, the costumes, and everything that I, that goes into it. So I did the video recording on Saturday morning. It took me four hours to record 13 different scenes. I used a uh, smoke smoke uh, machine to give it a little bit of uh, atmosphere at the beginning. And I hope it came out pretty good. There's a lot of things that I saw after I released it that I realized I want to change. But I don't believe in going backwards. So I'm noting the things that I need to do. And I'll add them to the next videos coming up. So more and more videos are going to be coming up, especially about, you know, the music that I've already produced. I've gotten so much music done over the years. Five albums, right? The first album was The Poimento. And the most popular song probably on that one is It's a Cobra Mordeo Caetano, right? A Cobra Mordeo Caetano, Caetano, Caetano A Cobra Mordeo Caetano y nunca vai voltar You know, the song talks about the snake biting Caetano or a representation snake means can represent in Brazilian culture can mean like evil or something bad. So something bad happened to Caetano. Which is if, like I always say, if you try to outsmart people or try to get away with stuff, it eventually comes back to you. So it's a good song. The second CD was uh, Cuando a Chuva Cai, When the Rain Falls. That was also an incredibly good learning experience as we did that with my uncle Francis recording out of his, uh, his place. It was a challenge because he's so uh, musically aware I mean, like theory, everything. He'd done a semester when he was younger at Berkeley Music uh, School in Boston. So he's he, he's someone who really, really knows music and how it works. Sometimes it can be a little bit uh, intimidating. But at the end of the day, you know, you, you don't learn to get away from a kick until you got kicked by somebody. So it was a great experience. And he, he recorded most of the vocals and... It was all a bunch of my original songs, so I hope a lot of people like that one. On that CD, I would say my favorite song would have to have been Cuando uh, Ashuva Kai. It's, you know, the story goes, when the rain falls, I remember Bahia. All the love, all the affection, all the magic. But that time is a time that's already passed. The, the time, the, you know, the, the sense of a young man and you know but when day turns to night in the land of the of all the saints by Jitos Santos the the land of the Orishas so it's it's a really lovely song and i like singing it so i thought i'd share that with you guys this morning on our third cd it was probably the most interesting thing we did my really good friend and excellent musician Marcelo Kimura helped me to produce uh Ile Mojuba and I made that CD and we redid some of our old songs and I invited my students to to participate. And the greatest thing about that was that it allowed so many students to understand really how like much they need to improve and how important music is to the whole Capoeira experience. So on that CD, probably my favorite was uh, Nirina, who is a doctor. He works in uh, Madagascar and he does a Smile Madagascar, and they f it's a charity that he works with, and they fix uh, cliff, cliff, cliff lips. And we know when, when kids are born with, with like a cut in their, in their lips, and he does all the surgery and all that, and helps out a lot of kids who wouldn't be able to have had access to that. That's actually something that'll be coming up in the future. I plan that whenever he does something, that I can do a little bit of an event here and add for his uh, charity over there, because that's something I really believe in, especially since I personally know him. 
So Nadina, if you hear this, you know, lots of love. You're doing fantastic with the Smile Madagascar. Uh, we did, uh, he's a great uh, guitarist and Nadina loves to sing reggae and we did, uh, we did our best to, to incorporate the harmony on that one and really it was a really good learning experience because I had to direct all the other people to, to reach the sound quality that I wanted. Then the last two CDs were uh, Mestre Vibes Volume 1 and uh, Vamo Que Vamo. Now Vamo Que Vamo is a capoeira CD with mostly all of my original songs and the so in the there's one track where Mestre Linguisa sings but beyond that it's all me. I play all the instruments, I do all the voices, you know, it, it, a lot of times it's just hard to get, not hard, but it's very challenging for me to, to call people to come help because I can't offer anything. For example, if somebody has to take a day off, you know, they're going to lose, lose their day of work. So I don't really like asking people to do stuff unless I know that I can compensate them some way. And from now on here with uh, Mastery, Mastery Vibes here on Patreon, I'm able to have a little bit of a a budget so that when I do things, I can do things for other people. If, if I pay a dancer, just like what we did at the last big event, I had to pay all the people who played, right? When we did the the Hot Byokai or the, the my show where we did it at the theater, that video is also on my our YouTube. So if you go to Mastery Vibes YouTube, you'll see that there's a video of us at a, at a local theater and I had to organize everything, and that was an incredibly challenging thing. But the Vamo Que Vamos is similar to that. You know, I had to do everything. So I'm glad that we have this, you know, community supporting so I can do all these extra things. Finally, the Mastery Vibe CD was probably my greatest uh, challenge, but also my greatest pleasure. It's, it's a combination of Afro-Brazilian roots that I love, that I study, that I practice, and I was able to get several... You know, like uh, Adario, uh, Marcelo, other great musicians, Mr. Linguista, of course, was on there. Paul, everybody, you know, uh, Betty Otake, she did a beautiful song. And the kids also were able to do a little bit of singing on there. And, it's, and it was a, a fantastic opportunity to be able to, to produce that song. Why? Because it was more of a Latin jazz or like people would say Brazilian jazz and Basically, I, I just consider it Brazilian jazz because the bass is very Afro-Brazilian. And then on top of that, we have like Paul doing um, the jazz bass and Dario with his cavaquinho and his Brazilian banjo. And then, of course, Marcelo with his Brazilian uh, guitar, uh, violon, and Betty Otake with her, with her incredible voice and singing and everything was also an amazing experience. Uh, recording, I kind of feel everybody's better recording than I am. I always find it challenging to record because once that light goes on, it's so much work, right? You're like, oh my God, oh my God, what do I do? I'm off. And then when you see the the recording, you realize how off you are doing so many different things. But, you know, it's a process. But the Mastery of Vibes was a, was a very good uh opportunity for me to learn too in a, in a diff, little bit more musical genre uh the five cds really influenced me a lot because each one was like a master's degree program you know i learned different things i had to understand you know music uh the quality the timing the orchestration the, the composition the which instruments to choose and all that so a lot of that was uh was done in those five cds and i just wanted to share that with you guys a little bit Today, I want to talk more about what's coming up. So, over the last three weeks, four weeks that I've been working, um, restarted the Patreon, I've actually come back with, uh, with a very focused intent. And the focused intent is, is to create a Patreon community that can help me to, to cover my costs and time, energy, moving, um, be able to pay for other people's things that I have to pay for when I have to call people to to help me and really just focus on creating and and visualizing and bringing to life all the amazing ideas that I have all the great ideas I hope that people will like and as I mentioned to to my wife right I'm actually creating for for you guys 
for the for the Patreon community. Of course, everyone else gets to see the final projects. I promise that I put everything like final projects will be on on YouTube and Instagram and people can see it on Facebook. But the behind the scenes, the podcast like this, once in a while I'll put a podcast up, but generally it'll be just for you guys because it's 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 something that you guys are supporting directly. And I don't know, maybe in the future we'll take a, a poll of the of some of you guys. And if you guys think I should put this out on a regular podcast service, well, then you guys can let me know and, and we'll see about that. I do have a distro kid and it's a it's a CD, like all our music's on uh, Spotify and all the different things. And I wonder if that would also be able to like could I put my podcast on that? But I'll have to have a look on that. For right now, I'm just focusing on growing our Patreon community. And like I said, we've got the different tiers, the different things are going on. And just, just you know, so if you guys not sure if, if what's going on, I kind of re, not restructured, but I re reorganized the different tiers a little bit. And I just wanted to talk to you guys about that so you guys can you know, take a look. And also, may, maybe you might decide you want to to upgrade, right? Uh, we have the $3 tier and that get all the Patreon uh, updates, early access of when I put things out, the behind the scenes contents, digital download, right? It also includes the, the podcast and everything, right? The digital downloads or behind the scenes, is, I, I kind of feel it's, it's the podcast. And I'm going to be talking about a lot of different things. I've got uh, Meste Gallego, who wrote uh, Playing in the Light, a song, I mean, a, a book. He's going to be coming up and he's going to be doing, uh, I'm going to be doing an interview with him coming up in the next few weeks. So I, I'm slowly getting more and more organized and able to take the podcast in the direction that I want, not only as a, as a, as a Capoeira Mastery, but as a mentor. So if, if you just want to hear the podcast and you just love throwing, you know, a cup of coffee at me every every month, you know, the three dollar tier is perfect. All the tiers are fantastic. The next one is the five dollar one. If you're at three dollars and you want to go up and, you know, hey, take take a chance. It just all it does is like you can ask more fan requests, right? You can say, hey, um, can you videotape more? of Japan in your videos or can you add more capoeira or can you add more more instruments so it'll it'll give you guys a chance to make requests and I'll do my best to accommodate you know the people that I can because again fan requests are great ideas the ten dollars a month the capoeira for life right so that's right the three dollar is the let's jinga jinga is the basic footwork of capoeira and the five dollars a month is can I kick it right because capoeira is all about kicking and then Capoeira for Life is $10 a month, and you get everything from the previous tiers, but you also get a Capoeira video request, right? For example, if you're if you're someone training Capoeira and you'd like me to explain something, I'd be more than happy to make a video explaining. For example, the other day uh, in class, I was explaining the difference between a Pion Jimaun and a Hodo Pio, and it's a technical, the variation is just one goes to the side, or in a, in a better way of understanding, one is a twist into a handstand, and the other one is a handstand first, then a twist. But it's, it's a very technical thing in Capoeira, and I'm, I'm happy to share my, my insights and experience with people. So the $10 a month, that's like, I mean, uh, you can request some videos or anything like, oh, how about this instrument or a couple of dance moves or whatever, and I'm more than happy to accommodate. Again, the th three tiers, you're directly supporting what I do here. There's no tier that's too low, too high, and, and I really appreciate it. And I'm, like I said, I'm just really focused on growing this Capoeira community. Now, I want to talk about the, the last tier, and I just updated it. And this is my, my dream tier, right? This is like the tier. This is the Zuador Tribe. It's $25 a month. I made a new picture for it and everything, so I'm feeling pretty good about it. It's the recommended by the creator. If you're a close friend of mine or somebody who really likes what I do, then I recommend this because there's always going to be a lot of extra stuff. I can't really talk about the extra stuff because it'll change as I get more people because it's a, it's a scale for the things I want to do. But I know that I can only have 100. There's four people doing it now. So if we can grow that up, um, let's say that the first the first goal would be easily to get like 30 or 40 people. If I get 40 people, I'll be able to do something that that is pretty remarkable. So if, if you're interested, if you're especially if you're in Japan 
If you're in Japan or anywhere in Asia, I really recommend for you to get the $25 a month Zuba Door Tribe because that, that, that is something that I'm going to be able to do a lot more with and especially to, to do things that I want. For example, I still plan to do the, um, the tour of Asia. Remember I was talking about, uh, I posted about how I want to be able to go and share these different aspects of Capoeira in organized workshops. And I did the workshops here and they were, they were really well received and fantastic. And I want to be able to do those in Korea, in Taiwan, and in Thailand, and possibly other places. And all that stuff, you know, takes takes um, uh, funds and, and a budget to be able to do. And at the same time, as I'm doing that, I want to record and add new material constantly. So it's it's a production budget, right? If I travel, it costs money for the flight, the hotel, by time. If I take Mestre Linguisa, it costs a lot more. So it's all about, you know, what I can do. And I figured that if I can get 100 uh, at the $25 tier, I'm pretty much set. And I can, you know, just focus only on teaching at the Academia and my Patreon community and doing artistic things. So that one, you become a Zoador tribe member. It's right at the top. For the $25 a month tier, if you're like in Japan or in Asia, I'll be releasing, to the best of my ability, I'll be releasing a new Capoeira video every week for studying, for training, for, for understanding Capoeira, especially on your growth of Capoeira. So I'm hoping to get that done. And this week I'll get get on that. Like right now I'm doing this podcast on a Monday. It's actually, Monday is the day we don't have any classes, but it's the day that I can get most of my stuff done. So I got a lot of my, my computer work stuff done today. And now I'm doing this podcast so that you guys can have something to listen to tomorrow morning. So my goal, again, is going to be to do the podcast Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays to release at least three times a week, going for the regular of four. Um, Like I said, I got some people I'm planning to interview. And one of the first things I'm going to be talking about, I'm getting it ready for uh, probably come out on on Wednesday. I'm going to be talking about the evolution of and the political division of the difference between Capoeira Angola and Capoeira Hegenol, what we call contemporary um, Capoeira. A lot of times people are telling me, like, this is this, this, and this, but very rarely do people have any study or any uh, research in the subject and how it started. So I'm going to get into it. It's going to be a little bit more academic, but I'm planning to do that on my next podcast. So when you hear this one, you know it's going to be the one after, and it'll probably be um, something called, like, Angola Hegenal um, from an educative or, or from a research perspective, right? So that you guys can see how that developed and how each school became the way it was and why is one associated more with Africa and you see a lot of people more like Rasta um, and then you see the other side, which is more sportive and more uh, Brazilian, if we want to say it. They're both uh, Brazilian manifestations and my point, um, Capoeira is from Brazil I don't see, I've never seen any evidence of it, anything else. Uh, just because it's a kick somewhere else doesn't mean it came from there. I mean, I've heard theories that Capoeira came from Savat, the French, like, foot fighting, um, the Angola dance. I mean, there's so many things, but uh, if we don't really have a a good base of where it's from, we're going to have to talk about it in a more researched and educative manner, just because it's important that people understand, because it's really not that different. It's really how people wanted to influence it and um, control the the outcome of using it as a cultural art. Cool, 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 cool. So, like I said, we've got a lot of new things coming up, and I hope to talk to you guys really soon. If you guys have any feedback, feel free to to contact me. You can email me here on Patreon or you can post and we'll get things done. Guys, again, the new video, Ijesha, is up. I reorganize the tiers. If you'd like to level up the tiers, you know, you can just go to your account and you can level up. I've got a goal of 100 at the $25, but if more and more people join at 5 3 4 and it all adds up, um, I'd like to get up to about, you know, enough so that this is actually like my non-teaching capoeira job if that makes any sense i teach capoeira classes about 16 a week and in the mornings i do this so this would be about five six hours seven hours a day that i put into it uh five six days a week so i'm trying to get that and and just be you know respectful of my own time guys have a fantastic day and i'll talk to you guys very soon mesh sukuri tokyo japan